The movie closet. Welcome back. Movie closet. Episode 58 in the closet. The week three of the month of horror. Ooh. We actually have the full crew here today. Yeah. We're here. We are reunited once more. Here we are for another spooky edition yeah, of the it, MC. It took a lot of blood sacrifices and yelling at the moon for this to happen. <laughs> Damn you, <laughs> Moon. Uh, Matt, what is the movie closet to any new listeners out there? Uh, four beautiful people in this closet picking movies based off a theme. We pitch our movies. We vote the winner. We watch the movie and we come back and discuss it. Boom. This week's theme. Zombies. Zombies. Brains. 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 My favorite monster. Of the monster movies. Zombies. It's not just one of them. It's when a bunch of them are coming for you. It's how they get you. It's how they get you. They get you oh, in man. packs. But, uh, hordes. yeah. Walking Dead returns today, so I thought it would be a fitting theme. Fuck yeah. Although I don't watch the show anymore. Because it sucks. Because it went down the pooper. <laughs> right down the pooper. Do you guys watch Walking Dead? I have not seen it. Since the second season. Yeah, I watched the first season, part of the RV season, and like a few episodes of The Farm, and I was like, okay, I'm tired, I'm done. Yeah, season two kind of sucked, but the second half was pretty good. But you know, it's slower moving than the pace of the zombies. Oh! (laughs) No! Zing! Got him! Who wants to go first this week for our zombie films? Uh, I will. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck was that? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Now, ladies. Hey. Hey, well, yeah. I'm picking the 1968, dare I say, masterpiece. Oh. I will allow. Night of the Living Dead. I concur. Most people might consider this the Ridge zombie movie. Oh, Ridge. The movie that brought zombies to the forefront. Rest in peace, George. Yeah, rest in peace, George Romero. Um, yeah, so the movie is basically a group of people who are um, hiding, basically boarding up this abandoned house so that they can stay safe from fucking zombies. Mm. The dead has risen. And then all of the frustration and, sh- and paranoia that happens with that. Um, a lot of people say that this movie is a metaphor for what was going on at the time, civil rights movement, and just how fucked the world was at the time. Um, even George Romero in an interview said that, uh, on his way to like take the, the, like once the film was done, they were driving it up to New York or something for like the first screenings and on the radio he heard that Martin Luther King Jr. had been shot and he's like oh shit i think this is oh, gonna wow. have like a real uh huge effect on people because of that so and yeah. it did and it still does super powerful um yeah really a bygone era of filmmaking yeah because he just made the movie yeah and then he just went and sold it to movie theaters yeah like he like literally would drive it around and shit and the and another interesting fact about night of the living dead is like well, it was originally supposed to be Night of the, I don't know, it was a re- I forgot what the original title was, but there was a different title that they copyrighted, I think, but they didn't copyright Night of the Living Dead, so that movie 
That's why you see if you watch horror movies, Night of the Living Dead is always playing on the TV because it's copyright free, mm. which is very sad because I'm sure that means that they lost a lot of money on that one. I'm not sure though, but I'm sure it made a ridiculous amount overseas yeah. too, right? A lot of ripoffs. Oh yeah, yeah. Or was that Dawn of the Dead? Dawn of the Dead. There's there was there's an Italian movie called Zombie Two, which is supposed to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead, I think. But it was never like uh, discussed with George Romero. I don't mm. think. I think he uh-huh. just made it. Oh, Romero made it, or the guy? The just, guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about pitching that one, but I decided not to live it. Did. Oh, but yeah. The one with the wood piece going in that chick's eye. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's a I, fun scene to watch. I wonder when the thought of zombies came around. I feel like probably before the thought of actual what we consider zombies, and I've been like. Reanimated skeletons. It's from. Uh, it comes from voodoo. Yeah, it's magic. Yeah, there's like there's like older like way way before Night of the Living Dead. There was like a couple of zombie movies like uh, that took place on like an island. You know. Huh. Yeah, I think one of them was like called like the White Zombie. Or yeah, some White shit. Zombie. White yeah. Zombie. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like fucking. It's always like voodoo magic controlling people. Yeah. That's where cool. like the zombie term came from. I could definitely go for a. A new like Bayou Black Magic Voodoo Magic movie. Yeah, I think the last one I actually cool. remember was like Skeleton Key or something. Mm. Um, mm, yeah, I think like they should definitely do another one of those themed kind yeah, of. Yeah, make a zombie movie like on based on the zombie roots. Well, yeah, Romero cool. didn't even consider them zombies. He called them ghouls. Yeah, because of the Voodoo Magic movies. Because, like, these dudes were, like, reanimated corpses who ate flesh. Not the what zombies were considered at the time. It was just, like, mind control. Mm-hmm. That makes so sense. he called them ghouls. But then it just became zombie. Yeah! Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> your history lesson yeah. for you guys this yeah. week. George Romero basically made the modern zombie. Well, he, does he, a lot of, he does a lot of great uh, commentaries over his movies, too. You can check out and get mm-hmm. a lot of insight. Into that world. I watch this movie every Halloween. Yeah, and another cool fact about this movie and um is obviously this movie is so famous because of the civil rights metaphor and having a black man as like the main character. And George Romero didn't even have that in mind, he said when he made it. He said that this guy was just the best guy for the part. So that's I think that's kinda cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's classic. The original zombie, the original mm. modern zombie. That's my pitch. Really good. There's a really good uh, color remake of this too. Mm, yeah, that was made in like the '80s. I got that one too. It's the ending's a little different. Kind of cool take. Did, did but, we watch that one here? Yeah, I think we watched it on Halloween. Oh, we did. Yeah. See, so yeah, I like to switch it up sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I like them both. They're they're both pretty good. Yeah. But all right, Night of Living Dead. Boom. I can I can segue nicely from that one, yeah, because I'm pitching George A. Romero's next film, Dawn of the Dead. Which from, one did we watch? Uh, we Return mean? of the Dead. We watched Return of the Living Dead and the new <clears throat> Dawn of the Dead. We watched the Dawn of the Dead remake actually. In the podcast. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering. Yeah. It all seems the same. Night of the Living Dead. We didn't. We weren't doing it on <laughs> the podcast. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So Dawn of the Dead, the successor. To Night of the Living Dead, you go from night to dawn, and then he made Day of the Dead. But uh, I don't know, cool fact about this. Dia del Muertos. Um, so this was the one where Romero and I can't think of his fucking name right now, and the guy who helped him write uh, Night of the Living Dead split off, and they both kind of made their quasi sequels to Night of the Living Dead, and mm. that's where Return of the Living Dead came from. Oh, okay. was the so these are both the this movie and uh Night of the Return of the Living Dead are kind of like sequels to Night of the Living Dead. But is there is there a, another one um is there like a sequel to Return of the Living Dead? Not as well Day of the Dead is after this and that's what Romero made. I don't think there's a sequel to Return of the Living Dead. Okay. But there might be. I I can't think of it right now. But uh yeah, this one um, it starts off in Philadelphia, and there's Philly. a SWAT team going in the projects, 
and there's fucking zombies everywhere. Two of them fucking freak out and bail because one of the dudes has a friend who works for the news station and he flies the traffic helicopter. And he's like, yo, he can get us out of here. So they meet up with him and his uh, TV executive girlfriend. And they uh, take refuge in a secluded shopping mall filled with zombies. And they, it's basically just them trying to survive. And it's really interesting to watch because, I mean, they do this in a lot of apocalypse movies where, like, you, they're fucking just take whatever you want, you know? Yeah. And it's a fucking... Romero has, like, he does social commentary in all his movies, like the civil rights movement... And this one's a metaphor for consumerism, mm. capitalism. We're all mindless zombies, mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking just buying shit. Yeah. Hell so yeah. I mean, you get a lot of that in movie. In the movie, um, one of the chicks is like pregnant, so that's like a thing they have to deal with. Um, Tom Savini. We talked about him when we watched. Uh, uh, fuck, to, with Levi. <laughs> yeah, uh, what the hell is that movie called? I can't think of it. From right. Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, from Dust Till Dawn. Um, so yeah, he did the uh, zombie makeup for this. Nice. Really badass. I mean, it's the first time that he Romero did a movie in color, and they're like really blue, the zombies are. Mm. And so it's like kind of cool because it's like nothing like they do now. And they had so many zombies, they had to keep it simple. So they mostly just have blue faces nice. and like some prosthetics and shit. But I guess it was Tom Savini's big start. And he, I thought was something cool about him. He was a fucking Vietnam war photographer. Yeah. And that's where he got all his inspiration from was just the fucked up shit he has seen. Yeah. There's a great documentary called, uh, and you can watch it for free on YouTube. It's called American Nightmare. And it basically talks about Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, Last House on the Left, just all the movies that came out during that era and had some social commentary and really like packed a punch and yeah yeah so yeah this is his, his big start but he did the effects and he's a biker in the movie there's a part when bikers come and try to fucking loot the place and um, yeah so I mean it's just a really cool zombie movie that takes place in one location and. It they have to like deal with these zombies in really practical ways, and it's just fun because when they get there, the mall is like overrun, and they go through the process of clearing out the mall, and it's really fun to watch to see how they do it because they're just like slow moving and shit. Mm. And it's Romero. Zombies look dope. Fuck yeah. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen the original. It's good. I watched it at work one night. Nice. And it and it's just like fuck. This is really good. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm pretty surprised at uh, your movie pick this week. I I definitely thought you were going to pick Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, I know you guys wouldn't vote for it. <laughs> I talk about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, Shaun of the Dead is probably my favorite zombie movie. Just because it calls back to like every great zombie movie ever made. For show. Sure. Yeah, so Dawn of the Dead. Boom. Check it out. Who's going next, Bass or Sam? Bass. Bass. Are you ready? The Bass Hill. So, with that said, I was going to pitch World War Z. Ooh. A twist. Yeah. I think I'm going to pitch Shaun of the Dead. Oh, (laughs) my God. You fucker. You fucker. Ah, That's funny. Um, (laughs) Damn. So, uh, I remember the first time I saw this movie, uh, I didn't like it. What? I was uh, again, again. I was kind of young, and as I've gotten older and watched it more, you didn't appreciate the humor. Yeah, now now that I'm older, I definitely appreciate the humor. Dude, Sean Dead contributed to my love of zombies. <laughs> nice, but uh, it's got Simon Pegg, um, pretty badass actor. Uh, but he he lives with his roommate. He has a friend, and they live in like a little English English town, and. Zombies start cut well, zo- like the zombie academic kind of starts breaking out, but it's more slow at the beginning of like people becoming zombies. And his roommate comes home, and I guess, uh, if I'm right, his roommate got like bit on the hand or something and then becomes a zombie. And at first, he didn't realize he was a zombie, which was like really funny. And then, uh, when it kind of clicked, um, and 
you know, he got with his friend and they're like, oh, we need to get down to the Winchester. That was, if I write, that was the right name of the bar. Yep. Yeah. Because it had a, a Winchester rifle. In the meantime, they're using all sorts of weird ass tools, fucking records to kill zombies mm. and garden tools and stuff. Oh, and I oh, think man. one of my favorite scenes is when they, like, they go to his parents or something. And they're in the car and like, uh, was it his dad or his mom that turns into the zombie? The stepdad. The stepdad. He's not my dad. <laughs> He's my stepdad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think this is also the one where they call out like points when you hit a zombie. Mm, if I remember right. No. No. I don't think That's so. A different one. So I was like, oh, 10 points or something. Um, <clears throat> Maybe wrong on that one. But it has been about a year and a half at least since I've seen this movie. Yeah, uh, but you know, Nick Frost, his best friend, um, is goes by Ed, and his girlfriend Liz, um, played by Kate Ashfield. And yeah, I mean that's just what they get to. They try to get to the Winchester to go fight, hold, you know, hold off against the zombies. I mean, where else would you want to go during a zombie apocalypse? There's gun, there's liquor, there might be some food there as well. Yeah, he mentioned that in the movie. He was like, I want to be able to smoke, drink, and know where all the exits are. Yeah. And that's why he wants to go there. So. I got those badass statues of him up there in the corner. Oh, yeah. 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 Edgar Wright, dude. Edgar Wright made this movie. He's but God. It definitely oh. took me a little bit to really get the humor of it. Um, but I always got a good laugh out of it. Hell yeah. I would I've would have uh, voted for it in the past, but some of the other movies I hadn't seen that I wanted to really see. Yeah. Yeah, they do have a lot of good zombie gags. Like when they're fucking when that um chick zombie, the first one they see is like standing in their backyard <laughs> and they think she's drunk. Yeah. But she's just like a zombie. Uh-huh. That's when they that's the one where they come out with the records and they start throwing them at her. Yeah. And they're going through all the records. They're to like, see. no, don't throw that record. Batman soundtrack. And then he whips it. Oh, Batman. Always useful. Yeah, I love that movie. <clears throat> but let's say Can we get your uh three, three words, words, Mr. Bass? Yeah. Bass is three words. I think my three words this week are gonna be very fitting. Mm. To the Winchester. <laughs> nice. Right on. To the Winchester. Hell yeah. Great pick. Great pick. All right, Sam, you want to bring us home? For sure. Bring it around town. So I am going not horror, mm. but still very much a zombie movie with Life After Beth. Beth or death? Beth. 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 So Beth. this this one is Damn it, Beth. um it's one zombie versus um plethora of zombies, I guess. So it's about this couple, um, Beth and whatever the guy's name is. But so his girlfriend dies, who is Aubrey Plaza, and after the funeral he starts like he can't really let go. He starts like hanging out with her parents or whatever. And then eventually her um her parents stop like contacting him because they find that Beth is not dead anymore. And they're trying to hide it from him, essentially. And he gets like freaked out. He eventually sees her through the window and then is like, what the fuck? She's, she's not dead. She's undead. She's undead. Oh. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain this movie very well, but essentially she is a zombie, obviously. And a zombie. What's his name? I it's about it. learning to let go. Learning mm. to let go, for sure. His name's Zach. Okay. So Zach thinks everything is great. His girlfriend is alive again, alive, and yeah, but she's not. She's not alive, and she's not dead. She's in, she's just a zombie. Undead. I don't know what else to say about it. It has a really good cast. It's really funny. It's pretty dry. 
but it has Aubrey Plaza, um, Dane DeHaan, Molly Shannon, love her, John C. Riley, love him. Is he the dad? He's the dad. Mm. And it also has um, Matthew Gray Goobler from Criminal Minds for like a little bit. Gray he's, Goobler. He's really funny. I like him. He is um, Dane Tan's brother, which I can definitely see a resemblance, even though they're not actually related. But anyway, it's really good. Great casting. It's really funny. It's really good. And really yeah. funny. Well, I, the only scene I really remember is when she's like chained to like a a washing machine yeah. or something. I don't remember a lot about this one. Uh, for some reason, I don't really remember a lot about it either. It's been like three years since I've seen it. I saw it when it like came out at the at first. It was like from 2014, 13. I think it's older than that, isn't it? I think I fucking was living in Michigan when I saw this. Life After Beth is a 2014 American oh. zombie comedy film. Guess not. Hmm. Yeah, 14. Guess I was here. Maybe you were visiting. <laughs> no, Michigan. I moved here in like 2012, I think. Maybe you were visiting Michigan when you saw it. Oh, uh, maybe I was. Could have been. I don't remember. Anyway. All not right. your typical zombie flick, but great nonetheless. Just want to spout off uh, something that just popped in my head. Anecdote time. Something just popped in my head, and I just wanted to throw it out here for everyone to reminisce in their late middle school, early junior high days. Does anyone remember zombie strippers? No. 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 I do not. (laughs) What? I do not. (laughs) Back in junior high, like, during the Halloween season, like, everyone um, was always, like, like, go to a friend's house or something and watch this, like, zombie strippers movie. And it was where, like, strip this there was a strip club and some girl becomes a zombie and becomes like super like the like the best thing since sliced bread and the strip club so all the other girls are like oh i want to become zombies and they all become zombies and then like it's just funny because they like start falling apart and fighting each other and stuff what the fuck yeah that sounds ridiculous Can't yeah, say i've like, seen that one it was like over the top funny but it's like it's just be kind of like oh dude you want to come over this weekend I got a copy of Zombie Strippers, man. <laughs> Maybe it was a Columbia thing. I don't know. I always thought it was like had a huge cult following, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sounds familiar, but I don't yeah. know. All right. Anything else for the life after Beth? Nah. All Not right. Much else to say. That means it's time to vote. We have Life After Beth, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Shaun of the Dead. Sam is the only one without the word dead in the title. Mm-hmm. Instead of dead, we have life. Boom. This is going to be a tough one this week. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to vote for. I'm so conflicted. So conflicted. All right, here we go. The 58th movie in the movie closet, Zombie Flick. The time is now, 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 now. We got one vote, Shaun of the Dead. We got one vote. Matt's movie of the dead. <laughs> Night, Night of the one. Living Dead. Okay. <laughs> Matt's movie of the dead. We got one vote. Dawn of the Dead. We're a three-way tie right now, people. This could be it right here. Life after Beth. <laughs> we got a, another tie. Wow, this just keeps happening. That's fucking three I'll, in a row we've had a tie. Really? I'll just go ahead and walk out of the room right now. <laughs> So now, so now there's a tie. We must consult the magic movie closet wheel. I think the movie closet, closet wheel is bunk. I won last week, right? Yeah. Spin it, white boy. Here we go. The wheel's a joke. Sam gets to choose what movie we watch. What will it be, Sam? You can pick any movie. Do I pick my movie? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go watch Life After Bath. Throw away the zombie theme and watch this movie. You bitch! All right, we're going to go watch Life After Bath. I'm just going to put my name all over that wheel in Sharpie. Din 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 din
Welcome back to the movie closet, episode 58. Yay! We just watched Life After Beth. Yo, we wow. Like, um, <laughs> do you believe in love after Yeah. Really? Fuck it's that. smooth jazz. Do you believe in love after Beth? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> All right, well, what are some thoughts <laughs> from first impressions? Uh, it was funny. First impression from me, I definitely did not describe that accurately <laughs> so there's definitely more than one zombie yeah mm. but you fancy that <laughs> yeah there can just never, there's never just one zombie that's true i did not remember how it happened or why it happened so i just thought it was one i apologize mm. for any misleading mm. whatever. fucking fraud over here sorry it's come from the person that said a uh, YouTube speech was a movie. Ooh. Ooh. True. Mm. We all remember that one. I'm full of unfortunate um, movie picks. Yeah, get out of here. And just leave. Yeah. Be gone. Maybe I will. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, essentially, it's uh, his girlfriend dies. She shows up. Uh, she slowly turns into a zombie. Other people start getting out of their graves, turns into full blown zombie shit. Um, he's like trying to reconnect with his dead girlfriend because they're gonna break up. Everything's all good. Then she starts getting super violent, acting weird, and you know, at the end he blows her brains out. Shit yep. hits the fan, yo. Yeah, it was ridiculous. They had some. They fucking didn't like establish the rules very well of like what was going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was kind of the point. I don't think they like wanted to. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Cause it was weird. Cause like the zombies one, they really liked the being in the attic for some reason. Yeah. yeah. That made sense. Two, they also really liked smooth jazz. They didn't calm them down. Yeah. I was just about to say, you know, I think the best part of the movie was the smooth jazz. <clears throat> I feel like if real zombie apocalypse happens, Smooth jazz will probably be playing from the skies. Why? Just because. Seems death fitting. Awesome. Smooth jazz. It Look seems great. fitting. Awesome. Awesome point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if there was a zombie apocalypse going on, I'd want smooth jazz to be playing. Really? Yeah. It's smooth jazz. It was fucking. Yeah, those two things seem like they did it just for a joke later in the movie. I think that's why they did a lot of things. Yeah, but it was like fucking the jazz one. They kind of rationalized it because like it made them feel warm. And that's what like they're fucking dead zombies and they want to feel alive again. So that one kind of had some grounds in like the universe of the film. But maybe yeah. the attic's the same because heat rises. Because yeah. <laughs> it's warm in there. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's it. That could be it. That was good. I mean, that but yeah, I mean, the attic just seemed like it was just, just to set up that there. fucking joke for when their their grandpa comes back or whatever, and <laughs> he like, like wants to go to the attic. That was really World bad. War Two. I've seen plenty of attics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, and then with the jazz thing too, the fucking all the zombies love jazz. Not just because, like, from when it set up with her, it was like, oh, this makes me feel warm. Mm -hmm. So you could think it would be like that with any music that is like soul music, but it's just fucking jazz. Like they uh, all love jazz. Excuse me, it's just smooth jazz. jazz. Smooth loving jazz. attic loving zombies. I mean, it was funny, but I thought it was funny when she pops her head out of the air vent. That was that was pretty funny. Yeah, funny. that was, was like, funny. Where are you going? Yeah. And she's Another to make thing it look too. Like the... Some of them, some of the zombies were like full blown zombies. And she, but she was like one of the first ones to come back, and it took her forever to like go full zombie. You don't know how long those other people have been back. You just don't see them yet. Okay, that's true. All right. Because I mean, what's his name? Jerry from Parks and Rec, the male yeah. guy. He was like already there. Yeah, but like, that was like the beginning. Yeah, but that was when it was still, like, sporadic and no one knew what was going on. Right. But then, like, when he woke up in that parking lot, 
there's that fucker with the old suit on that was just standing there like a zombie. Sure, he didn't well, overdose on drugs and was just still strung out. I guess he could. I don't have all the answers. It was just a different type of zombie thing, which yeah. was fine. It was funny. It was cool. Their own take on it. Yeah. It definitely made me want to see the zombie shit go down. You know? For sure. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I don't know. Yeah, For those sure. are really the only problems I had with it. Yeah. Other than that, it was fine. It was pretty good. Yeah. Quirky. Ridiculous. Outlandish. I was a watch when when she got the fucking shit on her face. I thought that the prosthetic looked kind of bad. Yeah. But then when she was like strapped to the washing machine, all zombied out, she looked really good. Yeah, yeah, she did. yeah. And I didn't really care for her fucking when she get all pissed and she starts screaming. <laughs> yeah. I didn't dig that yeah. too much. It was yeah. a bit much. Well, you know what? I bet she enjoyed playing that part though. Zombies. Or a bit much. Sometimes. What was that? I couldn't hear you mumble, McMumble pants. Zombies are a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies are a bit much sometimes. Yeah, it was a pretty good cast. Yeah. John C. Riley was good. He was funny. Yeah, he's really funny. And Molly Shannon was good. I they like were... her. She's just a concerned mom. She just wants her baby to be happy. Yeah, they were just in super denial. She was literally like feeding her. Her fingers yeah. at one point. That was a good bit. Yeah. He was like, He's I don't hungry. know what to do. She needs to eat. His his uh, brother was pretty funny. Yeah, he was super funny. I like him. That's a good character. How they'd get into those little arguments. Like, they'd have, like, a moment, a brotherly moment, and then they would, like, start bickering right <laughs> after. Mm. Those were good exchanges. How, uh, how is it, uh, how is it compared to real life, since we have a, a couple... Um, brothers. Oh, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, total hundred percent portrayal. Nailed it. Thanks. On the head. Excellent. Great. <laughs> Good. Great. Excellent. Um, his parents I enjoyed too, cause they fucking, they have like uh, like fucking they had like suburban, like fucking um, what do you call it? Like middle class people. Or whatever, like when he fucking goes to the house where they're all hiding, and he's like, "Oh, thank God!" He's like, "We got some bagels; they're frozen, but it's okay." Or when his yeah. mom got yeah, the got blood bagels, frozen, on her shirt, they're like they're like happy to see him, and then she, he's like, "Oh yeah, I had to kill Beth," and then she's like worrying if the blood stain's gonna come out of her shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. It's yeah. funny how they mix those two things, right? In a good way, and yeah. and they had some Comedic good relief. They uh speaking of the voodoo shit, they kind of referenced that too in the movie. Yeah, that was cool. I, I thought that was cool. Yeah, because the maid from uh his girlfriend's house like stormed off in the beginning, and he made the connection that she's like Haitian, that maybe she had something to do with it because of the voodoo magic, and they kind of he kind of pointed out that he's like being racist because he thought that. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. I was just a nice nod to the old zombie shit that we were talking about earlier. Nice connection there. For sure. Look at you, Sam. See? Don't act like you planned that shit. Yeah, I totally did. (laughs) (laughs) Mastermind over here. The master. That last shot, too, when they're riding in the car and it's um, the fucking main dude, Zach, and this new chick that he just had asked out. It's kind of Night of the Living Dead-esque. I thought it was it was like that fucking the graduate was that is that what it's called mm-hmm. with fucking uh, Dustin Dustin Hoffman had the end <laughs> like on the bus mm-hmm. no that's not what it's called it wasn't the graduate it was fucking is it Dustin Hoffman though yeah graduate is it the graduate well, the graduates where the dude comes back and ends up banging his girlfriend's mom yeah and that. Is that what you're talking about? I can't. I'm not sure. I don't know if I remember the end of that. They're like on the fucking bus. I gotta look it up. At the are end. You, are you sure you're not talking about uh, one of the movies we watched in here before? Uh, no, we never watched it. Ah, uh, that's just what it made me think of. 
when they were driving off at the end. Mm. Yeah, like right here. Yep. Yeah, because she smiled too. I wonder if that's what they were referencing. Probably get a copyright strike for that bit of the song playing. No, we were singing over it. It's okay. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Me. But yeah, so I don't know. Was anyone know if that last scene is a reference to the graduate? Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. We'll see. Any other good moments when she yeah, when she died and was rolling down the cliff face with yeah, that the was washing yeah. machine strapped her is pretty good. That was it was an oven. Oven. Yeah. Oh, was it an oven? Oven and I range. think so. Or like yeah. a stove. Yeah. They were in a kitchen. I could have been saying washing machine. You're weirdly you know, strong. when the two girls are <laughs> in the car and they're like or the guy and the girl got in the car and like, I'm kinda hungry. I'm like, are they becoming zombies? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Life after Beth too. Life after Christine. <laughs> Life continues. Is that what her name is? I don't know. I just made it I think up. It was Denise. Wexler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wexler. I was like, I wonder if Wexler is a callback to Sandy Wexler from uh Adam Sandler's movie. Maybe. Or did this probably come first? I think it was just a setup for when he saw her. Yeah. So you kind of get the sense his mom's trying to hook him up. Yeah, yeah, that was funny too when they were taking refuge and she, um, the new chick was hiding in the closet, and his mom was like trying to set him up in that like, fucked up great, in that fucked like, up moment. She looks good. She's a little uh, um, she's a little traumatized right now, but she'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Like, thanks, Mom. Yeah, I mean, anything else? Anyone else want to talk about something besides me? You guys want to contribute? Yeah, I was talking. <laughs> it I was a good one. I contributed by presenting it as my pick. So they bone in the park in the middle of daylight, which is kind of weird, but, like, zombie babies? Yeah, some kind of disease. Yeah, but she died. Necrophilia. If she wouldn't have died, like, or he wouldn't have killed her away. Wonder zombie babies? Question mark. Maybe that was another thing too. Was the sun fucking her up, or was she just decaying? I think she was just decaying, and the sun kind of accelerated it. Yeah, because they kind of talked it off as sunburn, but yeah. Well, all right. Uh, Life after Beth, decent film. Worth um, the watch. Beat out some great classic <laughs> zombie films somehow. <laughs> so, I mean, that's always good. Impressive victory, Sam. Blame it on the wheel. <laughs> hey, I thank you guys for not voting for my movies. If my name was on the wheel, maybe it could have been different. You were the one that voted for mine in the first place. Boom. Well, yeah. I haven't seen it, but... I mean... Fair enough. You You guys voted for, you know... There's an ours, so no one's at fault here. Yeah. No one's at fault. Except for Sam for picking this movie. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> I don't watch zombie movies that much. You don't really watch a in- lot of movies that we watch. I know, I'm not really into the whole zombie thing like that much. Oh man. Zombie. <laughs> I'm well, I was just, charges. I was just following the guidelines. You said it didn't have to be horror. I so, know. It I wasn't a bad did. movie. It yeah. wasn't a bad movie. It was yeah, a zombie I movie. It. Yeah. I guess the real question is, since I'm not on the board, who's Sammy gonna kick off? But yeah, uh, yeah, we'll move on. I'm gonna pick Ooh. off or kick off myself. You can't Bye. do that. What would the space become? Another Sam. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna replace yourself with yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, life after Beth. Eh. Good enough to see. Worth the watch. Yeah. yeah it's definitely. a movie. It's, it's a movie. It's definitely a good movie You'll to get watch. some good laughs. So check that out. You like and smooth jazz. Yeah. Yeah. You might enjoy it. <laughs> you right. like smooth jazz and necrophilia? This is the film for you. <laughs> oh, we Ooh. got a film for you. You're being represented <laughs> with this movie. Bean. There we go. Of course. I need. Is there one on the back? No. Because that's how many spaces. Well, you can put mine on there, Sammy. God damn it! You can you can waste yours to put mine on there. You know. Nope, not allowed. I know that. Respect the sanctity of the wheel. 
The, the wield is a farce. Oh, this, this is, is a heresy. Is spammy underneath. This isn't very sticky. That's sticky icky. <laughs> oh, wait. I can just take yours off because I'm underneath it. Oh, there you Sand. go. Boom, boom. Dredging make, up some old feelings make there. Make it izzy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all well, are welcome for that. Thank you. That was uh, episode 58 of the Movie Closet. Life After Beth. Let us know what you guys think about it or some of your favorite zombie films. Woo! Um, Is Life After Beth your favorite? It's probably someone's. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't bad. Yeah, that was pretty good. It was a decent film. It was Deese. 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 Perf. Or Ridge. <laughs> yeah, you can find us on extratone.com. A website filled with podcasts and articles and all that jazz. And we're on YouTube at Spanked Revision. Just look for the blue TV. Ah! Drop it in right there if you're watching this. You can watch us on YouTube if you're listening from Extra Town. Come over to YouTube and vice versa. Voila. Um, and come back next week for the finale of the month of horror. Uh, What's the name? I don't know yet. The, Qu- ha- the Halloween. Essential Halloween. Yeah, just we're going to pick some great Halloween movies. We'll just do that again. So come back for that. The Halloween special will be out on Halloween on Tuesday. Woo. So don't fucking miss it. We're all going to be dressed up in costume. Oh, God. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's going to be spooky. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Notes. It's probably the most unattractive thing I've ever heard you do. Oh, that's surprising. <laughs>